originally a Genesee bank, but this is the original floor here. It was put down piece by piece. Mm -hmm. So people would come in and then see the tellers, and then upstairs were the offices. Right. And that's the original vault door over there. Well, I don't want to feel how heavy it is. Sure. <laughs> well, it's our seed vault now. And so we sell seeds, um, especially permaculture plants and exotics. Mm -hmm. And so we're stocking up on those. No, no, that's right now, you, just, you just cleaned it out? I don't even see in there. Well, yeah, through that door, isn't that crazy? Go ahead. Yeah, and we got our seeds. Oh, we yeah. started, so. Here. A little green office, and then um, this is going to be the little green corner with seeds, and uh, the coffee corner is going to be over here, and then the rest will be a space for the entrepreneurs to work. Oh, okay. And um, that's the uh, part of the master plan. The city of Flint has a master plan. They haven't had it in over 20 years. Right. Uh, well, actually, 50 years. They haven't had a plan in the city, and now it's a 20-year plan. It's legal. It's legal now. And they want these uh, traditional neighborhoods, green neighborhoods, and green innovation. Yeah. Green innovation zones, those are the ones that there's only th about four of them. They're about right. 40 blocks each. And we're on the corner of one of them. I'll show you over here. Okay. This is a big match plant. And uh, that yellow area is the east side green innovation zone. So again, you have traditional neighborhood, green neighborhood, and then green innovation. Traditional oh. neighborhoods, they want to keep the same. Green neighborhoods, Community garden, small scale hoop house, and then green innovation is large scale industrial agriculture. So they have this. This is right here, the East Side Green Innovation Zone, or the State Streets. Yeah. And so, um, yeah, all these green lots are grass, and all the blue are houses. And the darker the blue, the worse the house is. So right. all, all the reds you see and all the dark blues will be gone and become green. And so that's why they made it a green zone oh, okay. because all the houses are being torn down. So. Mm -hmm. Now this is Flintopia, is that right? Flintopia, yeah. And how did this come about? So. Um, it started... Um, and give your name just so they know. Sure, sure. Sure. <laughs> I'm E.J. Spielmaker, and uh, E. James Spielmaker. I, I'm from here originally, and I never thought I'd come back to Flint, really. But right. after the Air Force, I went back to school for sustainable living. And I was, well, I was on a permaculture class trip. And we went to <clears throat> Appleton, Wisconsin. Right. And they had a community agriculture conference there. And we saw this film called Urban Roots, which is mm -hmm. about the urban farming boom in Detroit. And all these environmental science majors from all over the Midwest were there, and they were, I could notice how excited they were about all right. these things happening. So we get back on the bus to go back to school, college, and my friend Mark Chavez, <clears throat> he had a notebook and he had Detroit Topia written down, oh. and he had like <laughs> two pages of notes. Right. And I said, What are you doing? And he said, We gotta do this, man. <laughs> and, uh, and so I said, well, we should call it Flintopia because yeah. I'm from Flint and it's a person with the same problems. I have family and friend connections. I do, well, that was the first pitch for the name, but it's stuck and I really don't like it. But because everyone adds well, Topia to everything, yeah. but it works. People like right. it. So I like the name. Yeah, people like it. I think that's so awesome. We write these upstairs and I'll show you the human culture out here. Okay. What do you think needs to uh, happen in the city of Flint? There's so much poverty and homelessness. And well, I know for starters, one, yeah. Well, for starters, you know, you notice how they put solar panels on all the parking meters to charge us. Yeah. But why aren't they on every single building? Right. Uh, why don't we catch rainwater from the sky if Michigan gets 30 inches a year? Oh yeah, they won't. And, and that makes that. absolutely no sense because then they won't get the revenue. Right. And so the, these institutions are in bed together because they want the revenue. To make, oh, and, 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 and Flint is starving. When you have right. billion dollar grant institutions yeah. that do pet projects in Costa Rica instead of putting solar and water into yeah. people's homes. Because there's no money in it for them. Right. How much homelessness and poverty right in this in that, in couple of blocks radius? Right here, I, this exact area, I don't know. But a lot of the houses are missing now. They're gone. Yeah, right. and people live in the abandoned houses. So right. as the abandoned houses disappear, a lot of the crime does too. Yeah. Homeless people in there. Yeah. Culture beds here. Oh, okay. That's what that is over there. It looks like a pile of mulch, yeah. but it's actually a stack of logs and a pyramid. Oh, okay. So these are these will be stacked higher and higher until they're like a pyramid. And then we put down a green layer, like fresh grass or uh -huh. or uh, kitchen scraps, and then dirt and then mulch. Yeah. And then this way, the, this holds water, and it decomposes. Like when a tree falls yeah. in the woods, it becomes soil. Yeah. And so this is ideal for here with the water crisis, and right. we don't have to water these. We let the plants go to seed and just spread, and we yep. let nature decide what, what goes best where. And I see the garden over there. That's actually the Hispanic Center. Oh, okay. 
and that's theirs. That's theirs. They do organic organic gardening, which I really don't do. I'm more of a permaculture guy, which is yeah. where we do permanent things like orchards and food forests, things like this. Yeah. Yeah, you can see the lettuce growing on top. Okay. Lettuce on the top, roots on the bottom, and in the middle you have the vines and herbs and stuff. Yeah, we're gonna have this. That's where these pegs are. This will be the stage. We're gonna oh, have a okay. community stage for performance, oh, okay. and people will be able to see how here and graze and watch and bring their own yeah. coolers, movie, you know, Finding Nemo for kids yeah. or whatever. This just fun community stuff. And there's really not nothing quite like it over here on this side. So. so yeah. Clintopia would work because we have a uh, an abundance of people who can well put things together with spit and glue, you know, yeah, yeah. like Avery. He, he get, you know, I find all these stuff on the side of the road or on Craigslist, and I bring it over here, and slowly but surely, he just builds, right. builds, 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 you know. Yeah, with it, that's yeah. awesome. Yeah. Yeah, you can see the lettuce is starting to come in. Oh yeah. yeah. This is planted in all just that. two weeks ago. Wow. Same thing. You get over here on the sides too. Yeah, there's stuff planted right here at the base as well. And then we cardboarded and mulched all these paths. Now, who will have access to this? Oh, this is rare. Well, eventually, basically, the idea is well, the people who are in the community, who, who like uh, Tom Allen, he moved here from Iowa to buy a house and, yeah. and joined the community. Another friend of mine from West Michigan came here. He lives here now, he bought a house. So basically, the people in the building, and then yeah. them, and then slowly, as we have more, well, slowly but surely, like for example, the stuff on that side of the sidewalk, you can yeah. walk by the people are crazy. The idea is to do permanent installations. Not every time you plant a garden, you have to water it. After three or four days, those things start to weep, and so it's a job that was created that maybe someone isn't there to keep. Most people aren't don't have the time. Right. And so with permaculture, it's lazy farming. You just you plant, you walk away. You let nature decide. Nature is way more intelligent. Right. And you just let it figure it out because it knows where it should go where. And if it doesn't work, it doesn't work. Yeah. You just try again. So you're creating that environment for these permanent plants right. to thrive right. at, over time without maintenance. Right. Yeah. Exactly. You want basically a permaculture farm, or a permaculture farm would be like 50% trees right. or, or edible perennials like berry bushes and things like this. That's mm -hmm. stuff you have to replant every year. Obviously, you want your annual gardens, okay? Yeah. But you, but everyone wants to plant gardens, and then it just—it's all this work. Yeah. It's all this right. work, and people don't have the time to do it, and they're, we they're tilling up the soil. Our gardens, it's hard. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You have a garden? Yeah. Cool. He's a gardener. Oh, okay. <laughs> I'm catching rain from the roof over here. Oh, okay. The doctor's office. You got some of them too. Huh? Cool. And yeah, this one's gonna get buried in the ground. And then we're gonna oh wow for our main water source. This is actually an abandoned building that we turned into our shed. Oh okay. And uh, it's got cleaned it out and we go around it. And across the street, if you want to see the other view before you go just for a second, sure. it's actually got a lot more stuff on it. Okay. It's smaller. No matter what I do, I can't stop the grass. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I got this truck here and that was, it was a real game changer because I can do a lot of work with that thing. Oh yeah. Plus just if I just watch Craigslist, there's so much stuff to pick up, you know? Right. What types of things are you looking for then if we happen to see something that we think you might be able to use? Or any Craigslist or garage wood, sales yeah, or yeah wood yeah. scrap metal I mean okay. Oh, okay yeah I mean anything basically that's worth something even if it's not okay. worth money right now two right. by fours are worth money to us yeah. right you know? right hey Bruce that's Bruce the tree guy okay and he maintains the wood lot over there it's a little wood lot yeah chopping up trees and... how you doing if you're helping me out busy what's up I need a identification. Okay, cool. I got the building. Okay. Need to look plant and uh mm -hmm. mm -hmm. oh, cool. mm -hmm. mm -hmm. mm -hmm. I got two. I'm just giving a quick tour here. Uh -huh.
Uh, these are potatoes on the ends. Oh, okay. Oh, wow. And then the rest is just a seed mix that we spread. Yeah. So just whatever is, you know, I haven't even ID'd everything yet. I know that these are radishes on the bottom. But you can see the big, the fatty groundhog. <laughs> That's why I made that he get one. into it. <laughs> that hugo culture, you know, is much taller. Yeah. Okay, you don't have to bend over. Right. Okay, okay. this is stuff to bend over a little. <laughs> but we mulch it in cardboard so that way there's almost no weeds. And when there's grass, it's easy to uproot because the mulch, you just wipe it away yeah. and then grab the root. You know, it's really easy. Oh, wow. So, yeah, I just weeded it this morning, so most of the grass is gone. But as you can see, it's got, oh, well, there's sunflowers there. And yeah, there's stuff everywhere. Lettuce on top. There's very of cool. Parsley and ground cover. Most of the cabbages and all the greens we got that were starters got eaten by the groundhog, so yeah. we need a terrier. I guess they have to eat too, huh? Yeah, they got hungry. <laughs> yeah. Well, part of nature. Right, no doubt. Yeah. I'm going to go take a picture of these. Okay. How about Bruce? Okay. I appreciate you stopping by. Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Can you just Thanks. go 